All right, good day. This is Jamie Lukes, uh, ATC Senior AX Specialist. And today we're going to talk about doing the inventory close in Dynamics AX 2012 R3. So the real purpose for an inventory close is really primarily for your actual costed items. Um, what AX will do is as it's running through the, through the month or through the year, depending on how often you, you do a close or a revaluation, is it will average out that cost price. So let's say I buy an item for $40 and I also buy it for 60. AX will average it to 50 and that's kind of how it's gonna post transactions. Um, what our revaluation will do first is it will realign those so that you get proper margins for each sales order that those items got consumed to. And it will also, the closing part will also make it so that uh, our users are not, no longer able to post transactions in the past. Um, which is critical. Um, it's really a best practice that we should all follow. Typically, uh, the close is a month-end type procedure. Um, Revaluation re can actually be run um, as often as you needed. But let's just get started here. So I'm in our test environment here, QA, and I'm in inventory management. So our close process is under periodic, and we're going to open this. It's called closing and adjustment. Okay. So you see, I've already done a recalculation. This is a previous one, but you have these uh, different things here. Uh, but typically, you're always going to run a recalculation first. This is just going to basically AX is going out and it's looking at all the different transactions that I had, and it's lining up with okay, this pur purchase order came in first, and it went out to the sales order. Um, AX, it, the actual costing method we use for GNT specifically is FIFO. So what FIFO does is it's first in, first out, unless the order is specifically marked to another purchase order, which some of our users do, do uh, perform. So I'm going to run a recalculation, and this is just going to have AX do those uh, calculations. And pretty much, I'm just going to put it up to today, since we haven't run one since the end of September, and it's going to be by item number. And I can put notes in here, and this is just as going to be for testing. And right now I have an item number because I specifically just wanted to reval, but I'm going to make sure I get rid of that. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, this will be blank. So I'm just going to press reset. And it's gone. And we'll press OK. All right. and there's some advanced things in here. Pretty much just saying how far. I'm going to make it more um, just because of how many transactions there are. So let's put this at 500. Okay. All right. And let's press uh, again, if this is if you're doing like a large batch, like there's tons of transactions and we haven't run, we may want to run it in batch. Um, this way it uses less system resources and it really frees you up as a user because then it's running on a batch job versus someone else doing it. Um, if you do not have access to this, um, please let me know and we can actually I can work to, together with you to perform this. Uh, but we're going to leave this now. That should, hopefully this should be quick. We're going to run this. Okay, so right now we're going to see the folks working and it's supposed to be running through to recalculate all the inventory. Uh, I'm going to pause at this moment and we'll restart once it completes. All right, I just wanted to make a couple notes while this is processing. Uh, note, it will actually show you what the item is going through, processing level, preparing calculation level. Um, really that's related to if they're in production orders um, as well as different, uh, how much, if, if it's inventory that was just brought in by a, like a journal versus inventory brought in from a purchase order. So those are normal. Um, I just wanted to make, point that out. Okay, so it didn't take too long. It took about five minutes, and that's pretty considerably pretty good considering how many transactions we've probably had in the past two months for government and turban. Uh, so what we're gonna see here is my date. It gives it a voucher because remember, it's making adjustments because it's lining up what the actual value was with what we actually sold it out. I get a nice checkbox, meaning it's okay, it's good to go. Uh, if I want, I can actually look at the calculation lists, and this will show me the different changes it made. Um, I can also look at our settlements. So this is where it's basically telling you um, the adjustment that it made and why it made that adjustment. So in this case, these are FIFO, so we had to correct it for what it, we actually bought it or sold it for. And these ones are specifically marking. So marking means it was specifically a sales order that was linked to a purchase order directly in AX. So it didn't, it doesn't use the FIFO principle because they're explicitly linked orders. This really is critical, especially from like a margin standpoint. Um, 
and you will get a transaction ID for each one of these. And we'll do it against the, the actual financial dimension as to what was on that transaction itself. Let's just do a quick check. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that standpoint from a financial dimension issue. All right. So recalculation is done. Um, at this point, I could start my close procedure. And I'm going to check open quantities. And I'm going to put my closing data as, as actually 1130. Just in case. That is okay. And this is not very much different from what you're going to see in 2009. Really, this is just to make sure that everything is settled correctly from what we have invoiced and financially done. All right, so this report's going to run. It's just going to check anything that's open, meaning that it has not been financially closed. All right, so I'm going to pause while this report comes up. Okay, so the report came up. Uh, the report took about two minutes. Um, what it's showing us is basically things that are not financially, meaning if they're not invoiced yet, um, fully. So it's not going to really be able to calculate that. That's why they say they're open quantities. And it'll kind of tell you the relationship like this is going to be somewhat related to FIFO, marked transactions. Um, that refers to what we talked about earlier with when a sales order is specifically marked to a purchase order for the value. All right, so I'm comfortable with that pretty much. That's at this point. We'll go to our next. We're going to check cost prices. Okay. Pretty much leave it exactly as you see it here. What we're, what we're really looking for in this case is we want to make sure that we're not seeing these wild uh, variations between cost. I mean, I mean, ideally, when you're ordering a bolt or a pump, it should be within a certain tolerance of, of each other. Meaning I pay, I pay $500, $550, 400 450 within that range. Anything more that just seems very suspect and it kind of opens you up from an audit standpoint. Um, again, I'm going to pause so you don't have to sit here watching a load screen. So uh, please, please hold. Okay, we are back. Um, the report has generated. It took at this point about uh, a minute, two minutes. Um, you're going to see a lot of these errors. Deviation cannot be calculated because the unit cost price is zero. Um, the biggest reason we're seeing this for the first time is because when GNT went live, ever, there was no precedent for what the existing price, the cost price was. So it was zero. So you are going to see this the first time you ever do um, this report. Uh, but not to fear, once uh, as things come in, you're going to see this, these type of errors go away. Um, for the purposes of really what we're doing, we don't necessarily need to be worried about it because it's really just, it's the system telling us, hey, this is unusual because there was no cost price before. Now it's $123. There's no way I can tell you a deviation because you can't divide by zero. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to close this. Um, there's really not a lot we can do with any of these just because of the nature of where we were at with AX. Um, this will change as you go through additional um, closings. Close that, and at this point, our final is to actually do the close. So this is going to do all of our financial settlements. It's basically going to stop. It's going to stop anyone from trying to make a inventory uh, change in the past, which we do not want to do, and we don't we don't want users to even be allowed to do. So this will take care of that. And again, there's this nice box under here: run recalculation after closing. Um, so if, let's say we don't want to run a recalculation separate. You can do it at the close, and it will take care of it. All, all of that on its own. Um, but I typically like to recommend that we do the recalculation on a, before the close just because it gives you a better idea of realistically what the FIFO settlements are. All right, I'm going to press OK. All right, it's basically telling me it's going to cancel the recalculation I did earlier. And that's fine. I'm going to say yes. And it's just giving me the warning here in the info log. The recalculation should be canceled for it basically saying it's going to redo what I just what I did. But that's why you do the close is because the close really is the uh, financial way of saying, yes, I agree with the settlements and, he, and these are what they are going to be. All right. So again, I'm going to pause while this runs through its calculations, um, hopefully saving you some time so you don't have to watch this video and be bored out of your mind. OK, and we're back. So. What this is telling us, this is just giving us warning messages. So the first one's from our uh, one that I did not close before. Um, but it's really just telling me, hey, this can't, uh, this can't be fully settled. 
all that really means is that we've received the purchase order, but we have not gotten the invoice. So financially, I can't close that until I have an invoice. Uh, let's just scroll through here. Pretty much mo that's the most common warning you're going to see. It's just saying the system telling you, hey, I can't close this until I know financially what the invoice is, um, which is pretty standard. All right, and that's it. Um, so I'm going to close that. And I will have my nice closing. And, it will, and again, it will keep a history of log just like 2009. So if I need to go review that again and see what wasn't fully settled, I can. Uh, I have a checkbox, meaning it went successfully. So at this point, we have closed our inventory. Um, we've also revalued it to match with the FIFO actual costing. And you are complete for the month. Um, just like recalculation, we, can, uh, we do have the ability to run the closing on a batch job and have it kick off at a specific interval. Um, I hope this was educational. And, and again, if you have any questions, please contact me, um, jloeks -J at argo, or argoturbo.com. Uh, again, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.